Now to the opioid crisis in the United States. President Trump addressed the issue today with a team of advisors meeting in New Jersey. It's a problem touching all corners of the country. As the mayor of Nashville, Tennessee, Megan Barry has dealt with an increase in the number of overdose deaths in her city. But last month, it took a very personal turn. Lisa Desjardins has more. Mayor Megan Barry's 22-year-old son, Max, died a week and a half ago after an apparent overdose. She spoke about her son's death publicly for the first time yesterday when she returned to work. She's encouraging families to have frank conversations about addiction. And Mayor Barry joins me now from Nashville. Thank you for joining us and our very sincere condolences for your loss. Yeah, Lisa, thank you. You know, this opioid epidemic is so often told in statistics, but I'd rather hear a little bit about your son. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Sure, sure. Max was a, a wonderful kid. He was full of energy. He had just graduated from the University of Puget Sound in uh, the summer and was looking forward to the rest of his life. Uh, and uh, you're right, th there are lots of statistics out there, but when it happens to your own child, it's not a statistic. I'm wondering, you've been in civic life for a decade. You've been mayor for two years now. And of course, you've got a personal story here. When did it first come to your attention that the opioid epidemic was indeed a broad crisis in your community and in your life? We, we've seen those numbers in our own community ticking up over the last several years. And in fact, in this uh, last year, we, we equipped all of our first responders with Narcan so that they could have that drug available uh, when they, are, they find somebody who is experiencing an opioid overdose. And, and we've also been focused on trying to make sure that we have more uh, education and uh, by hiring some folks with our public health department to address this opioid crisis. But again, all of these, you know, the, these issues and these things that we're doing uh, really hit home for me two weeks ago Saturday when it was actually my own family that was impacted. Looking at this crisis nationally, you can really see the rise in recent years. Going back to 1999, from then until 2015, the Centers for Disease Control say that the amount of opioid prescriptions in this country quadrupled. And also during that same time period, you can see that the amount of overdose deaths from opioids similarly quadrupled. Of course, it's ticked up even more in recent years because of the addition of fentanyl. This is a very complicated question of access to addictive drugs and also overdose. How do you deal with that and what are the gaps? What are the resource needs that you have in Nashville? Well, one of the things that we definitely need are more resources. Uh, we need treatment beds. We need access for individuals who are exper experiencing addiction to have treatment options. And uh, that, that's been one of the conversations on a national level. You know, the, my son did go into rehab last summer, and he was able to go because he had health insurance. One of the things that some people have called for is a declaration of a national emergency and waivers allowing more communities to use Medicaid. Uh, yeah. for substance use. Is that something you see there? Is that something you think a national emergency could help in your community? I think a national emergency declaration would absolutely help in our community because it is a national emergency. Tennessee was numbered uh, 10th last year in the amount of drug overdoses. And so it's not just about uh, Nashville, it's about all of our communities. These, this is an urban and suburban and rural problem. Uh, and it crosses all families and it crosses all economic bases and it, it just it is a crisis. President Trump today is focused on this issue. That's yeah. one reason we're talking about it with you today. But he declined to declare a national emergency, but he did instead talk a lot about police, about ramping up law enforcement, about increased prosecutions, enforcing longer jail sentences. Do you think that sort of law and order approach is something that would help in your community? I don't think that we're going to arrest our way out of this. Uh, I think that it has to be much more broad and comprehensive. And that means making sure that we treat this like what it is, a disease, giving people access then to help um, and giving them access to treatment beds. I noticed that you all are trying to hire an addiction specialist for national. We are. Has it been easy to find one? I know there are shortages in some parts of the country of counselors and people to deal with this crisis. What we're in the process of interviewing right now, and, and uh, you're absolutely right. We need more of those uh, folks, and we need more resources. So uh, we look forward to, to filling that position and, uh, and, and more positions as, as we need them. I wish I could say you're in a unique position, but I think more and more of our lawmakers have personal experiences like you do. And I'm wondering what your experience and what your son's experience has given you in terms of how you look at this crisis? Well, we decided right away that we wanted to be transparent and honest about Max's death. Uh, and we don't want his death to define his life, but we also have to have an honest conversation about how he died. And you're right, 
This has impacted my family, but it impacts a lot of families. I can't tell you how many people have, have shared their grief story with me when they've never talked about how their son or their daughter died before, but now they feel like they can. And that's part of it. We have to have these frank conversations with our kids. Has it helped you to talk about this this last week, this last few days? Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what helps. All I know is that if, if there's a parent or a friend out there who is seeing something in their own child or a friend, to make sure that they are reaching out to them because that's going to be the best way to get them into treatment. These conversations have to be had. And, and if I can spare one family the pain and grief that we're going through, I hope I can. Mayor Megan Barry of Nashville, thank you so much for joining us. Lisa, thank you.